What up, y'all? It's your man, Album American. Just like I promised, I'll disappear and then I'll do a whole load of videos. Now, I like to respond to comments, questions, attacks. In this particular case, an attack from my man, Patrick Ritchie. Dude, you have got some anger issues. You've also got some information, analysis, and synthesis issues, but we're going to come to that. Nonetheless, we're going to address Patrick. Now, Patrick was commenting on my video uh, where I said I'm against immigration from non-practicing Muslims. And uh, Patrick really went off on a tangent. I'm not sure where it's coming from. But anyway, we're going to address Patrick's comments one by one with responses here and uh, see if we can't make sense of where Patrick's coming from. I have my hypothesis on what Patrick's real issue is, but we'll come to that. First and foremost, Patrick says, your video makes me farking mad with rage. Take your farking black ass to Saudi Arabia if you like Islam that much. But before you do, remember when Muslims double castrated your lot. I'm white, very proud of that fact. If you don't like me because I'm white and whites should stick to white, then I'm a racist. So farking what? Black people are of the same mind. So black people are racist too. You ignorant black cunt. And by the way, I'm not racist. I don't like the word nigger, but I do see your color, which is black. I'm not sure where to start with this. Okay. Take my black butt to Saudi Arabia. I lived in Saudi Arabia, Patrick, and I didn't really like it, but not for the reasons that you might think. They didn't double castrate me. I'm not sure how many private parts I have. I thought it was only one. I don't, I, what, what on my body can you castrate twice, given the definition and understanding of castration and how it's used? Or are you admitting that black people, we actually have much larger members than you, and they have to take it off in two sections because it's just so long? What are you saying, Patrick? Double castrate? Fine. We'll call it a typo. <laughs> uh, if you don't like me because I'm white and I should stick to whites, then fine, I'm racist. Okay. Are we... what? 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 Okay, wait a minute. In my video on immigration, I don't know where this came up with like sticking to your own kind. Uh, I actually gave you a verse from the Quran that says that people should intermarry. Um... But apparently you haven't watched any of my other videos. My children are mixed with a white woman, ethnic German. Um, my, uh, my grandfather, he's white. Uh, he's dead. Uh, my grandmother is, is not black. Uh, she's Arawak Indian. So, she, you know, they made my mom, who is not a black person. But the dominant genes are from my father, who actually is black American. So, um, I'm not sure if that makes me racist, man. I'm, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I don't have that luxury of being racist. How am I going to be racist? I, how would I justify that to my children? I'd look really crazy being a racist. Because then they're going to be like, well, you spent 23 years with our mom. What? Huh? Uh, Richie, whatever, man. Hey, uh, Patrick Richie, excuse me. Um, black people are of the same mind, so black people are racist too. Um, okay, now, black racism does exist. There are blacks who just don't like white people, white people because they're white. And there's black people who don't like white people because of racism they experienced. But we're not going to deal with that because it's, it's natural to dislike people who have mistreated you. Period. Point fact. And if they mistreat you because of your color, your race, something you cannot control in your personality, then that's, that's really bad. And you have a, an honest justification to dislike them. And that was the point of my immigration video. But anyway, let me ask you this. What is racism from black people in the West? It's impotent. It's almost inept because they don't have a power structure to act upon their racism. It's anger. It's a response to what they've experienced in life, what they've gone through. But racism from black people, unless you're Robert Mugabe, doesn't make sense. Mugabe kicked out all the white farmers. He had a power structure in place to act upon his racism. Do black people in the West have that? Do we own Kmart and fired all the white people working there? What do we own? Do we own houses and only black renters only? No. So, let me ask you what black racism, how does that affect you? If a black person is racist against you in the West, how does that harm you? How can it harm you? Can they deny you any service that you desire or need? Not without legal repercussions. But 
when you are a black person and you experience racism, vice versa, the entire system supports you. Because someone, he could deny you services for being black and he says, oh, he's just acting like that because, you know, these guys are always so hypersensitive about race and whatever. And then that sounds plausible to other white people. There's a system in place that can deny you services, respect, just simple human basic respect and dignity. There's an entire support network there for that. People who will outright deny that racism even exists in the West. So being a black racist? Okay, it's not cool. I don't like racists at all. If I find out someone's black and he's a racist, I don't hang out with them. I just don't like them. How am I going to hang out with them? How can I hang out with a black racist? He hates my grandfather. He hates one quarter of myself. My grandfather is white. How am I going to hang with someone who hates white people? My children. I love my children to death. I would kill unjustly for them. How... Am I going to hang with a person who hates them? I watch a lot of pro-black videos, and it makes me mad when they talk about those mulatto mixed kids, those half-caste kids. I hate that. I can't watch their videos anymore. God, you're a race traitor. A race traitor? I'm a human. Is there some alien invasion, and I went and sided with the freaking bug-eyed big head dudes? What are you talking about? I can't stand that talk. And I said in my other videos, and had you watched it, Patrick Ritchie, and I'm not angry here. You can't get me angry. I just, I'm passionate about when I talk. If you watch my other videos, you'd know that I don't like racists in general. And that's the foundation of my video against immigration that you're commenting on here. That I hate racists. And their racism is the cause of all the problems that you see with Islam in the West. Even the terrorism. It has to do with their racism. Because look at the people who, from the West, that are going to Syria. Mostly what? Arabs and Pakistanis. You do have a few blacks and a few. No, I've never seen any white guy on the TV waving a knife around. It's always the Arabs and Pakistanis. And when you look at the black Muslims, who do they suffer racism from the most? Pakistanis and Arab Muslims. All this extremism comes from racism. Islamic extremism, it might seem like a far stretch. It comes from other ideology also. Of course, there's a stronger ideology behind it. But it helps that they are racist. It allows them to go out and act out their angers and their frustrations and whatever else. There are Islamic ideologies behind it. I might be oversimplifying it. But the simple fact of the matter is, look at the people who are turning to extremism from the West. Look at them. Look at the, the ethnicity. And what I'm saying about immigration will stand true. And you know it. Moving on to your comments, Patrick. Uh... He, you said, even your own kind can see what I'm saying is the truth. So take your blinkers off, pal. You said of. It's supposed to be off. Double F. Um, I was an English teacher, so you're kind of killing me here, dude. Uh, and recognize it for what it is, because if you don't recognize the truth, you're stupid. I have no idea what you're talking about. Even my own people recognize it? Say one, what? What do you... I don't know. I don't understand the context of that statement, Richie. And this goes back to my idea that you don't have any, you know, information analysis and synthesis you know, uh, capacity or capabilities. Um, so I'm just going to chalk it up as that. I, I don't know what to make of that. You have very disjointed comments, but we're going to come to those. Moving on. You farking deserve to be slaves with that mindset. Oh, but don't farking forget it was your own that sold you to Arabs and whites. So you were calling me a racist. Now you're saying, understanding the context of African-Americans, how we got there, that I should go back into slavery. Because I have an idea which opposes your own. So because I have ideas which you dislike, I should be a slave. But I'm the racist. Richie. How did you come to this conclusion? Where, how are we connecting the dots here, Richie? You're not really making any sense. It just shows that you're actually a hateful angry person and you're trying to elicit an, an, an emotional response from me but it's not going to work Richie because you, you don't have that power over me so uh, sorry Richie, Patrick, Patrick, Richie I'm just going to call you Richie because I like Richie better than Patrick uh, actually I should call you Patrick like Patrick, I keep calling you Richie and this, I'm sorry about this little rant I'm going on right here I'm going to call you Patrick actually from now on because your name is Patrick Richie and your thought process reminds me of Patrick on Spongebob Squarepants and you got to remember, Patrick is the really, really stupid starfish. Yeah, you're not putting on a good show here, Patrick. Next comment. What makes me piss myself is you black farking twats blank out when you were farking slaves to Muslims. 
white people wouldn't forget. Blacks don't care about their own history with Arabs, not even Muhammad Ali. Look, um, I don't know what sort of circles you're reading from. Uh, I could link you a lot of Facebook groups, and they talk about Arab slavery and how it was significantly worse than white slavery, because whites didn't castrate blacks. And that's true. What you did say is true. Arabs did castrate a lot of uh, black slaves. Not all of them, obviously, because there's still a lot of them in the Middle East, and so they were obviously reproducing. Um, I've never seen anyone like blank over or look over Arab slavery, but let me ask you this. Under what pretext or what benefit does it bring black Americans to talk about Arab slavery? And it wasn't Arabs who enslaved him in specific. Black Americans talk about slavery of whites because that's the context that blacks were brought to America by white people. So the society that black Americans live in is the society that's developed around the idea of blacks being slaves. What does that have to do with Arabs? Yeah, they enslave people. But we're talking about blacks in America, not Arabia. Black Arab, Muslims, whatever, you know, is going on over there. I'm sure they have their arguments, the conversations, whatever, in the con historical context of what brought them to Arabia. But me as a black American, when I'm looking at my ancestors all the way back to Africa, they obviously didn't run into any Arabs. That's why I'm speaking English to you and not Arabic to you. So what is the importance to me in that particular sense? No, it's wrong. Slavery is wrong. We don't like slavery in general. Islam encourages the releasing of slaves. And it recognized that Arab pre-Islamic Arab society had slaves. And there is a massive encouragement to release slaves. The reward is so great that you'd be a damn crazy fool not to release a slave if you owned one in Islam. Because they recognized that what was going on was harmful to people in general. And Allah and his messenger, may peace and blessings be upon him, saw fit to reveal revelation in releasing your slaves. So, in terms of like, we're talking geographically, I'm not sure why a black American is going to be overly interested in in Arab slavery of blacks because the two are it led to two totally different developments of two different mindsets two different languages two different cultures entirely in that sense it doesn't make sense for blacks in America to be concerned about what happened halfway across the world and it doesn't affect their current environment they're in slavery in America affects the current environment that black Americans live in that's the race problem in America that most of America views black Americans as inferior because we were brought over as inferiors in that sense. And you've maintained the mentality, but you, you've broken down the structure of slavery. So what you're saying here doesn't make sense. Uh, then you go on and say, your stupid, ignorant, farking, I don't need, uh, fecal matter, sense to think Arabs like your lot makes me piss. Go back, my brother, in time when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was alive. Did he give a fark about Africans? Did he fark? He seen fear in the eyes of black Africans because, don't forget, Africans were separated by tribes and were easy to gain. I don't know what that means in general, but let me say, uh, one of the closest companions to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a man named Bilal. And Bilal was a black African. He said, I hear the footsteps of Bilal ahead of me, entering into paradise before me. Bilal was the first uh, individual to ever call the Adhan, the call to prayer. Bilal was castigated by, I believe who was Abu Dhar al-Ghafari. And Abu Dhar al-Ghafari, he was a companion also. He insulted Bilal for being black. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, heard of this. And he castigated him in return and... Abu Dhar went to Bilal, put his head on the ground, and wouldn't get up until Bilal would put his foot on his head as a sign of how much higher in respect he is to him. What are you talking about? You see, this is what I was talking about in the video about immigration, where you need to study Islam. You're speaking in ignorance about a very noble individual, the most noble of humanity, Muhammad, peace be upon him, who released slaves and gave black people status when the society around him wouldn't. But you're speaking in ignorance. 
and your comments, your cursing and your carrying on is telling of your ignorance and your mental capacity. Also your vocal and you know verbal capacity, but nonetheless. And then you go on, A, don't skirt around double castrated black Africans, Mr. Farking Know-It-All. No, I don't know it all, but apparently I know this topic better than you. And I talk on topics that I know half decent, which is obviously better than you. Listen, here's my hypothesis on why you're so angry. My video on immigration has stolen all the ideas that you had about Muslims and Islam in the West. And now you've got this cognitive dissonance thing going on and you're upset. You don't know how to deal with the information except to react with anger. I've snatched those ignorant ideas from your head and you're upset. Tell me I'm wrong, Patrick. Am I wrong, Patrick? If I'm wrong, tell me. I'm pretty sure that's what it has to do with. You're upset with the fact that you can no longer, or you can't, you would like to view Islam and Muslims in a particular way, and I've stolen that from you. And so you're angry, and you think you're going to elicit a, a, an emotional response from Abu American, but you're not, because you just don't give a damn. You, who are you to me? If you were one of my little kids or something, you know, I might be upset, you know, and there might be something that you could, like, trigger within me, but you can't trigger anything within me, man. It's like, because I don't care. I, I really don't. So, Patrick, I, I don't know where all your comments are coming from. I don't know where your anger is coming from. There's no connection between your comments and my video. You just went off on a tangent. Which just displays that you're an angry person. And so you went on the attack on race. But it doesn't work on me, man. Because words only have the power that I give it. And your words have no power against me. But they are quite vexing and confusing. As an individual who studies psychology, you know, on the side, I, I kind of find your mentality a bit odd. Now, if you listen to Stefan Molyneux, I think this is a reflection of your IQ, which is quite low. I I'm just using Stefan Molyneux's, uh, you know, process of thinking here. That you have a difficult time with with uh, intelligent conversation. And so you react in anger and you lash out. And that's because your ineptitude and your inabil inability to communicate your ideas or your thoughts. Or even your anger. I can communicate my anger without being angry. Like, ah, yeah, Patrick, you fart to it. What, what are we, women, Patrick? Get it under grips, man. Suck that emotion in. Hold it in, man. Don't be so angry. You're acting like a little girl. What, what is this, Patrick? Patrick, what are you doing? Are you a man? Or are you faking as a girl? Because this is more like female response. Let me say something about him and his kids or whatever else to try and piss him off. This is what I know women to be from, you know, to do. They want to piss you off, and so they say some crazy, just real firebrand stuff. Let me guess, Patrick. You were raised by a single mother, weren't you? Patrick, when I get my psychology degree, degree we're going to sit you down on the sofa. And we're going to deal with these anger issues. We will heal you, Patrick. Let me just say this right now, Patrick. It's not your fault. It's not your fault, Patrick. It's okay. Cry it out, Patrick. Just let it out. But it's not your fault. All right, Patrick. I'm out.